Coming this meeting is now called to order. Before we start the crust of this thing, I'd like to show you these are in front of you. And those were presented to uh, us from the first grade, and we thank them for that, and honoring you know, what they are to have us as school board members. So, thank you for creating. All right, we'll move on to the roll call of knowledge visitors. Welcome. Paul, and uh, uh, we have. Lori McElroy. Okay. All right. Uh, on uh, item number three is to wel welcome our new student school board member, Kaylee Arn. Kaylee, welcome. And would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself here in school? Yeah. Um, I'm a junior leader at school. I play three sports, volleyball, basketball, and softball. And I'm in a lot of students' clubs. What's our name? And I'm working on an Thank you. Then number four, we'll welcome and introduce Joe Johnson. Our intern in the call, or it is an intern, or yeah. yeah. superintendent. Yeah. So, yep. so I, am, yep. Go ahead. I am Jill Johnson, and I worked in the Ogilvy District for eight years, from 2010 to 2018. And I am currently employed at Spectrum High School in Elk River as the coordinator of curriculum and instruction. And I'm working on my uh, admin licensure. So working in my off-site hours. And so I'm here tonight to just kind of get a, get a feeling for how you guys run things at the board level. All right. Well, welcome. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to number four. Or number five, I mean, the agenda approval. Anybody want anything pulled from the agenda or I'll ask for... A motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion by Mr. Hickerson. Have a second. 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 Second, <laughs> second by Casey Hine, just by the nose. Just by a nose, you got Second by Casey. All those in favor, and we'll do a roll call vote. Start with Mr. Josh. Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Open forum. Anybody in your audience that has anything, or did we get anybody any correspondence on our? I did not, I did not either. Anything coming through our school's website or through our email? I think they... Nothing. Okay. Then we'll move on to reports. We'll start with Alicia Nelson, our elementary principal. Okay. Alicia. Um. So I'm not going to mess with technology and screen sharing tonight, but I shared my presentation to all of you, and if you have questions, you can let me know. Always some fun pictures in there. Um, the front slide shows um, some of our teachers dressing up last month in their character day, and students doing some different types of work throughout the building, and we have a little poster around the corner that um, we celebrated one year of teaching through a pandemic. So this was the one year anniversary of our school closing and I thought it would be fun to just recognize that and kind of let people stop and let that sink in. Like it's been a lot of work. Um, we recognize our kids and families a lot, but tonight I really want to recognize our teachers and support staff for um, hanging in there through the unexpected and working through a time when we still don't even know what the, the next day is going to bring or the next year is going to bring and just encourage them to be proud of themselves in the moment that we're in and that we were able to keep going and you know we're healthy and safe we've been through some little hiccups but we have things to be thankful for so some of them took a little picture by their time just to remember that and i want them to know that i value our teachers more than I can say right now. So trying to help them get a little pet talk through the end of the year. We can see that the feet setting in. So be sure to encourage our employees to finish trying. But nice weather helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in March we had a really successful parent teacher conferences. We did everything virtual. It 
list well. We had a chart indicating which families we couldn't get in contact with, so we had other follow-up measures for that. And we, of course, would like to get back to in-person conferences and those community things where we bring our friends and family into the book fair and all of that, but it wasn't the right year. But we still did that, and kudos to Tom Nichols for organizing and setting up and taking down the book fair and doing that on top of her job and on top of coaching. And we need people to keep everything going strong for our school. They basically have no personal time at all. So it's, it's times like that where I see the dedication of staff around here. Um, organizing and hiring for targeted services happened. We were wondering how we were going to pull it off because we had a lot of kids sign up, like a lot. So we ended up hiring four teachers for each club, plus have to burn support staffing for each club. That's a lot, and we're very excited that it's going to start tomorrow. So yeah. Would, would you also share on um, the timing so that they yeah. understand the transition that we're making? Or when, when they actually have their other services oh, yeah. program? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the kids go right from class at the end of the day, right into the recovery method. And then it's class about an hour, and they get them on the bus with their older siblings or on their usual bus. Are they going to be combining meals as well for their kids? They can do a take home supper. Okay. Yep, they'll just come right here, grab their supper, and then we out the door. It's nice for them. Thank you. Yeah. Our fundraiser has been completed and um, just shy of $2,000 raised by the elementary students for their own activities. So that went well. We have had some staff morale and wellness activities going on, and it's important to keep those going. So the little contest, I took a picture of our mug contest in there, and one of our women there. We've had different purposeful activities going on too support each other and have a little fun. Still looking for some ideas too. Um, the preschool fundraiser is closed and that's a really big thing for their programming as well. We have had some scheduling and organizing for kindergarten camp. We're doing that differently. And then I do it in the spring here. And use it as a kind of a kickoff for kindergarten to know their classrooms early and their teachers no time spent over the summer wondering what that's going to look like for me because I already know I think it's a really good thing and that's happening um splitting our population in half so letters a through m class names on one night and through c on a separate night just a little more personal opportunity to have time to chat with the teacher the schedule is really nice for that um they get to go in they get a tour to get a snack, to get to take a photo, and do a project with a parent, and then the night ends on the playground where they get a play, but they also have to have a chat with the teacher out there, and then take a take home supper to go home from that too. So Mike, Sandy, um, I'll be there. And Tara's in that room, I'm going to ask them that they stick around to help you kind of be available for that night, and um, some specialists to be there as well. We've done a lot of summer and early planning for the next year already. So that's good. Feel really good about that. And um, some interest has come forward for summer school as of today. Mm -hmm. So also a very good thing. There is meetings happening all the time. We have been loaded. The last three weeks have been so exciting. But we've gotten a lot done. And you can see all the different things we've met about. But the most exciting piece for me is to kind of bring back more of the CBIS aspect we met today. We really want to um, take our plans from last year and see which parts we can implement in the next few months. And then move forward with that. Upcoming, like I said, reading and math club, we were at 15 to 20 kids per group signed up. And yeah, we have the pop-up pantry on Wednesday. I'm going to help out with that and some other staff and students will be helping as well. I think my job is something to do with traffic for that. <laughs> 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 if you trust me. 
Uh, NWEA testing sessions begin tomorrow. Mostly Wednesday, I think. Not too much testing. But, um, that's going to go very nicely, and we look forward to seeing students. We had already met our goal that we kind of quietly set for NWEA. We met it in the winter window. And so I didn't say too much about it until like a week ago because I didn't want to wait. Our egos are like, we still have a lot of work to do, you know. But well, I'm excited to see us go past that. But we will. Um, April 9th, if you want to join in virtually, I'll send an invite out. It's our student recognition ceremony online. And if you haven't done one yet this year, it's kind of fun because the students present themselves as students of the quarter. So they have to kind of get a blog on, meet the teachers, get their own speech for the whole school, and then log off. MCA, we have set tentatively for April 20th, and we're about to kind of make a schedule to suggest. So it could be some time there or after that we uh, get that schedule out. Fast window open same course, we've been talking about that a lot. Uh, had a little pet talk today about that piece of testing does not look as great as we would like to see. And that's partially because. It's one of those weird things. We could, we could spend a lot of time teaching to the test, but we don't necessarily want to do that either. So kind of the bell. And then final round of teacher observations. I have some scheduled for next week and then fast Done for the year. We recommend our teachers for content. I'd like to share with you all the fun little things, you know, that we don't have time for in these books. Yeah, want to know what you know. Anything else? Anybody? All right, thank you. Yes. All right, uh, go ahead. Okay, so in the high school, um, we are once again getting ready for testing. So NWA will be starting here. And then um, AP2 is on March 30th, and we'll be talking about that um, a little bit later on in the and MCA uh, will be getting new part of the for that test. Um, now, MCAs are going to be extended a little bit this year, and that was because um, Minnesota was uh, able to ask for a waiver, but if they didn't have a waiver, then there were other things that they would have to do on one of them, which was the easier option, was to extend the testing window, and that's the one that the state of Minnesota had um, decided to do. And so, um, one thing as a classroom teacher, you always want, if you could have two more weeks of instruction with your kids before you test them, you know, that's the ideal situation. And so, um, Alisa and I will get together and kind of look at schedule a little bit, then we'll get with Becky and come up with a concrete schedule for um, MCA testing, and um, then we'll get that out to the parents so that they know exactly when the testing will be, so that they don't schedule appointments and things like that. They can do for that. Um, with teacher evaluations, I have one more teacher to evaluate, and then we are done, um, although my peer observer still needs to complete their observation. And so we're very close in the high school being done with that. Lots and lots and lots of meetings, you know, on, on most days, that's probably more than half of our day, <laughs> and sometimes the entire day is nothing but meetings. And so, um, you know, special education of five floors, we have our regular meetings that we have with students who are already in those programs, but this year with, um, you know, distance learning, we have a lot of students that are struggling, and so we have a lot more requests for evaluation for those programs, and so we have a lot of those meetings. Um, coaching in a few, there's softball, baseball, and track, and so we have those. We had a meeting after school with crisis and safety to discuss some of the things that um, you know we're most concerned about at the time. And you know, right now one of the big concerns that we do have is you know the mental health and wellness of our students and staff. And so that's something that we're looking at and addressing. Um, we had two comps meetings after school in which we're looking at our district goals to see how we are meeting the needs of the students and um, making sure that they are being sufficient in their reading. 
and um, then of course our evaluation and our AIW PLC goals that we have with our staff. So that's all part of the key count and we meet um, with that a few times a year in order to evaluate the program and decide how the next year is going to run. And then uh, staff development meeting and today we did have staff development training in which we had a suicide prevention training. And, you know, in order for a teacher to get their license renewal every five years, there's certain components that they have to have. And suicide um, prevention was one of the components that every teacher has to have at least an hour of that in order to get their license renewal. And we are so blessed to have Amber Hosey here from White House, and she was the one who actually presented the information for us. So it's very nice to have, which, you know, if we did have a crisis going on in the school or, you know, with our students, that we sometimes do, you know, look for her for guidance on that. So it's very much any conflict. Um, uh, curriculum review, you know, just kind of looking at our science and our CTE courses and seeing what we need to do to update those and um, get those purchases made that are needed. We had one meeting already with our ALP in regards to credit recovery. We have a lot of students that, you know, distance learning was not their friend, even though they tried it as best as they could. And um, so we do have a lot of students who are in need of credit recovery. And so we are going to be offering a spring session with them and then also a summer session so that they, there's two opportunities for them to um, re recoup some of those credits. And um, so we're meeting with the ALP group and coming up with dates and requirements and then that information will be sent out to any of the students who are behind this credit. Um, and then, you know, along with meetings, there's a lot of covering classes and Alicia and I have had to do that quite a bit, you know, when we have teachers and almost no subs, but teachers are gone. You know, we're in covering classes quite often and some, luckily if it's only an hour or two, then that isn't too bad, but otherwise, and then for student events, um, all of these radio hours have performed, um, actually performed on March 15th and 14th. We have um, foreign exchange students, so in the last two weeks I've gotten two requests for foreign exchange students to be placed here for the next year, and it would be um, for a full year. We have one from um, South Korea, and we have one from Poland. So far, that would like to be placed here. And so we'll be looking at that, and hopefully we can add a few more. I think one year, I think we have five. Mm -hmm. It's really out with a lot, and so. Um, no COVID restrictions in that area at all? No, hopefully not. Oh, it no, could be. No, I mean, I'm sure they'll need to be tested, you know, prior to coming over, but then after that, it's just a regular. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, last year we did have a, you know, some time, I should say most of the time students come from the fall and stay throughout the remainder of the year. Last year we had a situation, and it does happen occasionally where somebody comes in the middle of the year, so we had a foreign exchange student that came for a second semester and then stayed for the first semester, and she did not go home that I'm aware of, so she stayed the entire time with her whole family. Um, so that happens. <laughs> and then um, winter sports, I'll let you guys talk about the basketball, the girls' basketball, but then, um, you know, boys. I know that Coach Reaper was very um, proud that the boys won four games this year. So that was an improvement from the year before. And overall, I think they're doing a pretty nice job with their, um, with their program. It's, it's so nice to have consistent coaches. For our students, and you know that's what we want for every single sport, and um, so we're going for that. Wrestling had um, playoffs in Cass Lake this weekend, and so we actually had five wrestlers that went there. So we had um, Gavin McLevis, and he placed third, and then we had Bowles first, and he placed fourth, and then we also had Rex Padova who wrestled, and oh. Owen Hines, and then we also had um, Ethan Warren. And Ethan Warren actually plays first, so he will be competing um, in the state level. And 
and for student activities that are coming up. So speech has their conference meet tonight, which is very important to them because with speech, a lot of times when they have their, their speech meet, it's volunteers who are being the judges. And so with this conference meet tonight, it's the actual um, certified judges that are coming in. And so their feedback is very important for these speech students. And then they will be getting ready for their sub sessions on Monday. So they'll have their meet, get all the feedback, and then Monday is full time. So, um, National Honor Society and the American Red Cross will be hosting a blood drive on March 26th. That one will be hosted in the building. And so that's on Friday. And Student Council will be hosting their formal dance this weekend at a school. I want to use that because, yeah. Okay, so I'll let you talk about that. And then eighth day will be held on April 30th. So Ms. Fester, typically for eight days, all of her A students or her FFA students have different activities going on throughout the day. And of course, they're all integrated. <laughs> Most of them are outside, but um, it is a, a fun day for a lot of students to go out when they have time in their classes to see what's going on in the day world. Believe that's all we have. Thank you. But if you guys have any questions about anything, just always let me know. Anybody at this time? Okay, we'll move on. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Superintendent Kathy. Okay, so um, Hazel and David, were you going to talk about the radio play at all? Um, I might have. Okay. I, I was able to attend the radio play last weekend on, on Sunday and I just wanted to know that it was really intriguing, really different. But my gosh, what a great experience for our kids to do something completely different in the world of theater and to learn about history as well. They did a fabulous job. It was, um, it was my pleasure to be there as a part of the audience. Last um, Tuesday was the capital day for the Region 6 um, superintendents and we did not go down to the Capitol. Everything was done virtually. And so I was able to meet with um, Representative Erickson, um, our Senator Matthews. Um, we also, as a whole group, met with um, with um, Senator Chamberlain, who is the chair of the Education Finance and um, Finance and Policy Committee at the, at the um, Senate level. And then also we met with Representative uh, Dabney, who is the chair of the Education Policy um, Committee. And we met with um, Senator Carlin Nelson at the very end of the day, just because. And I, I say that just because she has been heavily involved with education in the past, but now she, this year she is the Senate, uh, she is the actual chair of the tax committee. And then she did share a little bit about um, tax implications. But so it was very, very good. Um, again, a different different format, but um, I was pleased that we were there. Um, the MS, MASA um, platform um, for our schools, which is also supported by the Minnesota School Boards Association, is um, two and two. Really asking that that's got to be, you know, the, the foundation, the base that there's 2% increase in funding for our schools in mm -hmm. both years of, of the um, legislative um, session. Uh, Kathy, were yes, they two, two across the limit? It's um, right now that, well, what the what our NASA and MSBA, I believe it was just the two and two, okay. and but I, I don't recall the, the, the actual cost of living increase in there. That would be very nice if it could be. Um, they are, there is just one real hot item at the legislature right now that I am going to share because there are probably four or five different bills that are carrying this. It is with um, social studies standards and with the civics. Right now, most school districts have a civics test that is given to our ninth graders. And we have to make sure that they receive a, a score of 60% or higher. Um, and we have to verify that we have that in your QM folders that they have taken this test. Well, there is a push for a complete civics course to be offered at the 11th or 12th grade level. And that is, um, it's, it's under so much scrutiny and so much um, controversy by, by different groups. And of course, 
um, MSBA and, and NASA, we are not supporting that because we already have the civics that's being held in ninth grade. But, but there is there is a big push. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens when um, when all of the, the bills have been heard and what actually goes into legislation. The next thing I wanted to share was um, payback. So I had another interview opportunity um, last Friday morning. And so I shared with, um, with radio listeners um, about our pop-up pantry. And of course, that's happening on Wednesday. And we're all very excited about that. We, um, if you have any, any chance to get that word out to community members, please do so. Um, it's from 11 to 11.30 here in our parking lot. And it's quite a day for, um, for um, Second Harvest because they're starting over in Malacca, excuse me, over in Mora at 9 o'clock. Then they're coming over here to Ogilvy at 11 o'clock. And then I believe that they are going to be in Princeton at 1 o'clock. So um, it'll be really interesting to see how this how this all plays out, and I sure hope that our community um, does come and receive um, receive the food. The uh, next item that I wanted to share is today's in service. Um, oh, by the way, uh, as also with that radio interview, sorry, um, I I talked about the Judy Shadians caring for kids fund, and the reason I talked about that was that we have been selected as a finalist from Town & Country Insurance in Mora. Well, they have about four different offices, but it's the Mora office that, um, that actually nominated us. And it was Amanda Halbert, who's one of our moms here. And how it works is they have three different, um, different, um, different groups or um, um, events that they want to actually um, um, actually sponsor or host. And so we're in competition with two other um, fundraising great in, um, um, initiatives, but I'm not sure what they are yet. Um, and so how it works is on Friday, they are going to release a Facebook post for us, and Becky is going to be putting that on the school Facebook page. And then people go in and they vote for Judy Shadeen's Caring for Kids Fund. And if you do the, the like, it's one vote. And if you um, put in there the little emoji that's you know, got the heart or the smiley face, then those count for extra votes. And if you write in a comment, then it's even more. So the actual um, competition runs from, from March, um, March 26th through April 1st. And again, I had the opportunity to share a little bit about um, Julia Shadini and um, why this, this fund, which um, started in 2003. This is a fund that has lived a long time in our district and is going very strong, 18 years that it's been in existence. And so while I was digging for my research so I could share some information, I came across this sign. And this sign says, beautiful clock. And this beautiful clock was provided by Dustin Hines. And it was a dollar requested donation that people would put towards this clock. And then whoever um, whoever's name was drawn, then they received Dustin's clock. So please I have this for you to take home for Dustin because of, I think he'll get a kick out of that. The, the next thing I had also shared was um, our great kids. I said on the radio that I'm sure every superintendent talks about um, their kids, and I, and I said, our kids are the very best. We have the best kids over here at um, Ogilvy, and Rock and Robin thought that was pretty good, um, and she she agreed with us as well. Um, and then um, at that time, then I gave them um, gave her a sports update also about all three of our winter sports teams, and where we were headed with that. So that was fun. Okay, I wanted to talk about today's um, today's actual teacher in service because the first thing to celebrate um, the after effects of our crisis management safety team meeting, we wanted to try to um, raise the morale. We wanted to try to um, help people um, celebrate some of the things that are happening as we transition um, through our, our COVID practices and protocols. So as of tomorrow, Temperature checks will no longer be required of our staff. They will not need to um, check their temp. They won't need to record their, their temperature, but they have the choice. 
So if they want to check it just to see what it is, um, the, the thermometers will still be at our entrances because we still have that protocol in place for people guests as they come into our school. Okay. Um, I also then talked with them about um, money and making sure that they were aware of our finance facilities um, meeting tomorrow and if there were any real big ticket items that, that they wanted us to, um, to share with you, that that would, that would happen at the committee level. And we talked about um, distance learning and if there was any, um, any item that they needed, especially in the world of technology, because we still have gear funds that need to be um, applied for, and we have to have that budget for the first round of gear funding um, needs to be done, completely done by May 1st. So Lori and I will be finishing that up this week to make sure that we're ahead of it. Um, we talked about the summer planning. We talked about our, our huge health and safety bond project and shared with the teachers that Gary Lovitz had met with um, Sue Alicia and me and that the last, our last student contact date and graduation is June 4th and the teachers will need to be ready to vacate their rooms on June 9th, so the following um, Wednesday. And Gary is going to be coming into our school on the next teacher in service day, which is April 12th, and he'll go around to every single classroom and then just share with the teachers what the extent of construction is going to look like in your classroom. Because it very well could be that with the HVAC system that if one classroom might only have three or four ceiling tiles that need to come out so they can get at, um, at the, the HVAC um, system. Or it might be a room where um, the majority of the tiles need to come out so that the work can be done. And so again, he's going to personally go around, let the teachers know exactly what, um, what they're in for as we move into that, that project. And um, for, for those of you that might not be aware, the major construction is going to be the instructional wing of the school. So it's all four um, hallways of classrooms. It does also encompass the business office, the um, media center. I think it encompasses the teacher's lounge too, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. But um, we will be able to use our auditorium. Um, I'm thinking of some places that are air conditioned as we're running our summer programs. So we can use the auditorium, we can use the boardroom, we can use the, um, the, the ALP, um, we'll be able to use all of our gyms. Um, so we do have, um, we have an exciting uh, proposal or an exciting um, way of looking at um, doing summer school much different than what we've ever done before. And of course, um, community ed, very much excited about outdoor activities, getting our kids back to uh, normalcy with that with that planning. Um, we also talked a bit about um, uh, distance learning with COVID and where we're headed with that, and that will be discussed more with you as a board um, when we do go into um, a closed session talking about the impact of um, COVID on our staffing. Um, and then I believe um, that should be it for that. And I just wanted to um, share with you that. Um, an Operation Roundup grant has been submitted on behalf of our school district, Dave Halverson, and I worked on that, and Dave was great about um, getting a quote. Um, we had no idea that there would be a company so close to home that would be able to come over here and give us a quote. Um, they are, they are um, stationed out of um, enforcement. And it just so happened that the person that came out and provided us with a quote was a former student of Ogilvy. And so um, we are looking at straightening at the four poles, the four um, stadium wooden light poles that are on the south side of the field. And that would be right by the announcing booth. And so um, we'll have to just cross our fingers um, that they will um, select Ogilvy's, um, Ogilvy's um, application for that grant. Um, and the cost did come in at $5,190, and that's for four, the four posts that would need to be straightened, um, backfilling, uh, the conduit that needed to be replaced, um, all of that um, is included in that, in that grant. Okay, um, para evaluations um, are going to be held this Thursday and uh, finishing them up on Friday if necessary. Um, I thank Alicia for getting that out to all of the teachers 
So we have the teachers' evaluations, the parents um, have done their own self-evaluation, and then they will be meeting with me for that final um, evaluation process. And also we started the evaluation process for our heads of departments. So at our last district um, meeting, um, they have all of the, um, the forms in their hands. And so as soon as the paraeducators are done with, um, with that part of the evaluation process, then I'll start with the heads of departments. So my goal is by mid-April, all of the evaluations will be um, accomplished, completed, um, that I'm responsible for. So, yeah, are there any questions? Otherwise, that's what I have for you today. Does it fall include any electrical work, too? Um, it would be replacing the conduit, if it yeah. needs to. Um, and I don't believe that there's any issue with the lights okay. themselves. So, um, we'll see what happens when they actually do straighten them up. And what's the finance meeting? The finance facilities meeting is tomorrow morning. It is scheduled for 10 to noon. And I believe that everybody has responded that they will be able to attend. It's a luncheon meeting as well, so um, trying to, to work with people's schedules. Okay. So pretty excited about that and bringing some, some projects to the table. Thank you, Gary. Anything else for Kathy? Well, we know her phone number. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. All right, board members. Anyone like to share any thoughts, whatever? I would, board chair. I'm, okay, floor is yours. Reno. All right, I'm going to start off with, um, I know that the safety committee had asked for information if there was any concerns, and I know that I had brought forward the crosswalk in front of the bank to possibly get that blinking light. I was able to find the grant through MnDOT um, under the Safe Route to Schools, which I had given Kathy. I did attend. Um, there was a meeting with ECE that Matt was Hegerness. Um, regarding the electrical issues at the school last week, um, I did meet with Kathy and the uh, board chair regarding the direction of the legislative committee and community engagement opportunities, which brings me to my next piece. Um, <clears throat> right now, everybody is going into session. There's a lot of bills coming forward. Um, some really big concerns are unfunded mandates. Um, MSBA is really, really pushing that there be no new mandates just because our administration and our teachers kind of have a lot on their plate at this point. Um, I would really encourage our board members to sign up for the MSBA advocate. Um, that should give you a good rundown of what's being proposed, what the status of those things are, and what MSBA positions are. Um, right now, there's about 50 bills that have made it through committee that would uh, have an impact on our school. I'm not going to get into all of those, otherwise we would be here all night. Um, if you are interested, please sign up for that. Please familiarize yourself with those. Even if they don't pass, they do serve a really good purpose for brainstorming purposes for our committees and our um, negotiation teams. Um, also with legislation, um, I've been going to the advocate meetings on Fridays and learning a lot about the different processes and different things that are happening um, on our state side. It's going to be an interesting budget year. I know that MSBA is also going for that um, two and two funding. The civics thing, uh, the civic, civics. <laughs> classes that Kathy was talking about, um, they do want input from school board members. Um, again, that's another one of those things you're gonna have to sign up for with the MSBA advocates. Um, I've spoken with Kim Lewis over at MSBA. She's kind of the, the lead for the legislative stuff at MSBA and asked her for some directions on things that would help Ogilvy better advocate. I've also spoken to Jill DeMaglia. She is the District 9 Director for MSBA for our area. So that's where we should be funneling a lot of our ideas and concerns to. Um, let's see what else. I have also 
joined a committee here with Kathy for the Accelerates uh, CBR to expand broadband, working with Pine, Aiken, Malacca, Kathy, I think I'm missing a couple others. Um, no, it's Pine, Aiken, um, it's, yeah, and it's Malax Ojibwe. There we go. Um, and that's to get broadband throughout our county. Uh, I believe that we're at 26 point, I think it's 4% of residents have access to the internet. And I believe that's the lowest in the state. So I'm um, going to help try to push for that. Um, do you guys have any questions with that? Um, certainly give me a heads up or Miss Kathy a heads up on that too. That's what I have for you guys. Thanks, Reno. Uh, with the broadband um, from Blandon, it's a Blandon project um, grant, and that if there is a commitment that goes with it, and so uh, Reno is going to really do a great job for us with that um, too. Um, we have to attend 15 weeks of um, sessions, and um, it's basically an extra hour of work besides attending the actual meetings that last two hours each week, and so. Um, there, there was nothing that I could take on by myself, and so I have Reno helping um, with the legislative piece, and we have Becky helping us with the technology piece. So it's from Ogilvy schools were very well represented um, with three members, and we also um, are fortunate to have Kayla Peterson on that um, that committee also. So she's representing Wellia, yeah. and it's it's just really nice to see. Um, Good people from Ogilvy making sure that we're taking care of our community. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any other board members? Well, again, attending uh, meetings are the thing of the year, I guess, because there's sure a lot of meetings. We went through a lot of meetings, did what we had to do, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but the results will be in some of the things that we discussed in our agenda here today. So, we'll move on then to uh, Student school board members, and we'll start with you, Hazel. Uh, so the both boys and girls basketball season ended. Um, the girls have a really good season next year, and um, they're so excited for next year and ready for the following season next year. Um, and they lost to Hinkley in the second round. And I think we lost by the It was really close. Cool um, and the boys, they lost the first round. That's the team. So, um, that is starting March 30th. And, and all the athletes are really excited to have been so excited to see them this season last year. So, it's really exciting. Um, she did hospital formal this Saturday, 
All the information will be posted around the school on flyers and everything, and we're going to be sending out the email. So, students, if you're listening, you check your email. <laughs> um, on this, we're playing at Easter, Comes at Easter, just to kind of start some fun things out of school. And then the Earth Day activities with the elementary, including both the high school and elementary side. And I spoke to Kelsey Tito, and she said to look on the school website and Facebook Tuesday to Friday this week for speech performances, and it'll be like a countdown and stuff section. So, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's nice. We gave a really nice speech at Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was a good report. Thank you very much. Both of you. All right. Any questions for the school board members? All right. Here. Mr. Chair, could yeah. I just share with you that um, Mrs. Davis, uh, Mr. Nelson, and I did have a meeting this morning um, about the winter formal. So all of the details have been put into place and all of the safety protocols have been mapped out. And we are very excited for this, again, transi transitioning into having fun with our kids and to, to really make this um, somewhat normal for them. Um, and, and again, the, the, the best defense against COVID is the mask, so they will be required to be wearing masks that night. And so um, that's, that's something that the kids don't seem to be bothered by too much as long as they can have a winter tournament. So, um, we're very happy about that. And prom and graduation um, plans have started um, with, again, the governor doing some releasing, Minnesota Department of Health, Minnesota Department of Education are sharing some of the guidelines we need to play, uh, put into place. And so you'll hear more about that as we develop those. I'm so happy to hear that about this in the formal. It makes my heart, we walked out of here, Josh and I, that day. I even had a little bit of pattern in my heart that it was going to happen. <laughs> so good for you, girl. And boy. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll move on. Is any district employee, Mr. Paul Jacobs, you are recognized. I am for those that don't have any Paul Jacobs, maintenance operation. And I usually bring something. You know what it's like the old app or something new. But on the app, I'm looking for So one of the cost things. So this is in the pool. And here's the leak. And the yeah. leak is from the outside in, not the inside out. So we emergency fix the fire sprinkle, move the fire sprinkle site in the pool room. And we fix it just enough to make it run. And what we're going really to need to be done, the whole thing needs to be done, put everything in there, stuff that all the sprinkle heads and everything. Unfortunately, it can work in there. There's no worry about the ductwork falling because the brackets are up into that. That we're trying to figure out how we're going to get the scaffolding and we're going to do it without. Here it is to do any more work in the emergency work because that's the next step on that. So I'm getting costs on, I think 4500 is about what I heard for now. So I uh, you can see how the inside looks really nice. But now they do galvanize, they don't do this anymore. They use a different thing and everything. <clears throat> and that's how we're going to do it. Because it's all fitting. I don't know, I know some of my told this before to some people, but so when the school was built 30 years ago, this is what was legal, which is one bolt in. So you can see what happens. So now, every time there's one of these, in the sprinkler system, about every, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. So the only way, the way you usually find all these leaks is the tile starts to get wet and you're like, hey, it's dry out. And then you get up there and then you find these. So, so there's a process, process of replacing that as they leak? Yeah, because if you decided to, I asked um, Corey something. I said, Corey, do you think we would, Put in a thing to do them all at once. He goes, because I said it's kind of like one shingle's going, yeah. all the shingles are going. He goes, You don't have enough of them going to warrant just saying to replace them all. It's just the stuff is all about the tile and you don't get to see it. So I just wanted people to see, because I don't know, 
That shows on you guys. That's something. So then I want to go back to this view a little bit. So when you push it back to this room, caught on, you know, the, all the things that go up there, that, they all melted right into this. We had thought it was a valve they were going. But what we really think it was was those plastic covers melted and just started melting along the hole. Come in. And so what I was going to show you, so we pulled, we're up to about 500 of them that we've pulled so far. And from that pull, you can see that. And you can see during various seats, so this is us pulling around all the classrooms. And, and you know, I just pulled all of that. But we're in different stages of so it was good that we started pulling them. And what I don't know is we think it's because the ends are starting to brittle on the floor, the fluorescent pins in, and they're getting brittle when they arc. And when they arc, they start to melt. So we we'll that that was about it. Other than working on the electrical, doing with that. And then uh, today, McDowell was here. The other one for the eight and so we've been doing a lot of work with contractors coming in. Everybody thinks it's starting in June, but it's not. Yeah, we're still working on the plumbing and 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 the plumbing what area we're going to put the pumps in the back storage area so I got them all in a park. Well, I can't wait until June and I got to do it now. I have it ready for June and then we're trying to figure out where, what. So, as Kathy said, some rooms literally are having all the lights, everything. You know, I've got four rooms for sure that are totally being ripped apart. So, it's not as pretty, 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 pretty summer. So, that was. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. As you can see the consent agenda, anybody want anything pulled out of there? Now's the time to do it. Otherwise, I'll entertain that motion to approve the consent agenda as you see it. Motion by Casey Iron. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Any discussion about anything on here? All right. Hearing none, I'll ask the roll call vote. Josh? Aye. 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 That's all right. Reno? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Okay, Mr. Pierre. Okay. Everybody, isn't that great? <laughs> it is approved unanimously. unanimously. Thank you. Action items approved March claim. Uh, we'll turn this over to Casey. Uh, February claim, please. Uh, it's, um, if it's the March, it's the March business and business office, which is the February claim. February claim. Okay, mm -hmm. so motion to approve the February claim. Oh, oh sorry. Motion to approve the February claim of 177,820. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Henderson. Any discussion on that? Hearing that Board vote. Chair. Go ahead. You know. Uh, the agenda says March. Are we changing? Oh, yeah. I see that. And Ms. Member Hines said February. Yes. The motion. Can I ask for clarification, please? But if this is what we're going to do, then we're going to have two months that have the same the same claims because the way the business office operates is this is the March bills, the bills that were paid in the month of March, which From happened. February. Right. Yeah. And so so if you want to say February claims, then we need to um, make an amendment to the to the actual agenda and change that. So, but then that means that last month in February, it was the February claims, and this month in March, it would be the February claims. So it's just, a, you know, it's um, basically just a, a so mindset what, of, of how it's being used. That's right. 
Okay, but so, so we're going to change what we've done for 30 years, you mean? Or just? No, we don't have to. I just, okay. I'm, I I got to pick up myself. So okay. it is a March plan. It's in March. We're approving February. So I just mixed up my birthday. Oh, okay. It so, but it, right, it is the March business transactions that have taken place in our district. That's what you normally do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just compare. Okay. <laughs> so, so, why don't you restate your motion again? <laughs> okay. So, so, motion to approve March claim of $177,825. Okay, thank you. Did you send yourself a second that? Yeah, second. All right. Any more discussion on that? Sorry. That's all right. Who seconded that, we're, please? Well, Mr. Hickerson, we're human beings, Casey. <laughs> okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Hickerson. Aye. 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 Reno. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. School calendar, number 11, uh, 2021 20. 22 school calendar final approval. Is that what you're looking for, Kathy? Yep. Everybody's Thanks. seen it. I've seen it a couple. Everybody's got them. Yep. And there were no changes from the second reading to this final reading on taking um, action today. And I think everybody's pretty happy with it. So I'll entertain a motion to accept the school calendar for 2021 2022. So move this motion by Mr. Hickerson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Hickerson? Aye. I vote aye. Aye. Casey, aye. Reno? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you for the people that put that calendar together. Policy is our third reading. Uh, just in that we had the uh, policy review. There were some revisions, and I believe it was in 720 and 713. But they were minor, and the first now, when we do the revisions on them, how soon do you put them on our uh, documents so that we can review the changes? I am hoping that they will be put out there tomorrow because okay. they are completely finished. I have the finished ones, these are ready to punch and put in our um, binders well. and I will just forward the, the policies um, so they can be put onto the website. So you, you should see that final um, piece of action tomorrow. All right, very good. I'll entertain a motion to approve the third reading of the policy 701 or as they are listed. Let's go that way. So move. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second. Second by Casey Hines. Any discussion on the policy? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mr. Josh? Aye. Mr. Hickerson? Aye. 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 Reno? Oh. Aye. Aye. And uh, um, Mr. Peterson? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. What? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, item number 13, we all read it, the desire uh, of the, the notice of desire to negotiate the OEA contract. We have to acknowledge that, that we have received it and willing to negotiate uh, that contract for the next contract year. So entertain that motion. Mm -hmm. Motion by Casey Hines. For the second. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. A discussion on that. Roll call vote. Mr. Josh? Aye. Mr. Hickerson? Aye. I will aye. Casey? Aye. Casey? Aye. Reno? Reno? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Peterson? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay, the ACT testing procedures, item number 14. All right, Kathy, I'm turning that one to you. I'm turning it to Ms. Davis. Okay, Ms. Davis. <laughs> so, Mrs. Davis. Yes. Yeah.
So in the fall, you know, we did have an ACT testing, but that was for the seniors who did not get to do their ACT testing last spring. And so we did restrict the fall one just to those seniors so that we didn't have so many um, going. Now, of course, we do still have to offer the ACT. They have that scheduled for March 30th. And on that day, as we have done in the past, when the students start, they have to start their test by 9 o'clock. And um, they usually get done around 1. And so they get one break, one 10, 15 minute break um, for like snacks, restrooms, things like that. And then they do get a 25, 30 minute lunch time that, you know, we bring the lunch in. But it is kind of a long day of testing for them. And I, we usually have them start meeting at 8.30. So once again, we are requesting, like you have granted in the past, that the students who actually take the test are able to leave when they are done. If they so choose, if they choose to stay or want to stay, you know, things like that, then we will allow them. And we have done that in the past too. So. Yes, we have, and I recall that. And there are procedures in the place that you have for those that go or those that stay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you're asking us to do on the ACT testing day that we let these kids out after they perform the test? Correct. At the discretion of supervision. Yeah. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to that effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we want to clarify that, Doctor? Just as I said it. Uh, motion to approve uh, ACT testing procedures uh, outlined by a few days. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Casey. Any other discussion on that? I, I just got a question to me. Yeah. You don't know enough, but are, are, are a lot of the colleges not requiring the ACT to get into the last year? Uh, a lot of them are going back to requiring it because even like with um, technical colleges, they required the ACT place during the past last year and for this year they did waive it. However, it's now back in place for the following year. So, yeah. Not that it would have mattered any. I, I was just yeah. curious. I know yeah, we have to talk about that too. Yeah. A lot of students who have already enrolled into a school probably won't have to retake an, or take an ACT if they didn't and are being successful in the process. However, if it's a new enrollment, they would. Any other discussion? Hearing that roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. Dickerson. Aye. Boy. Aye. Casey. Aye. Reno. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Enrollment numbers. Kathy? I did not um, send this out to you because it is exactly the same as it was in February. So as of last Friday, March 19th, we have 207 students in grades K through um, 5. We have 278 students in grades 6 through 12 for a total of 485 students. Okay, thank you. Stable. Yes. All right, well, I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, uh, accept the enrollment numbers. I'll make a motion to accept the enrollment numbers as we go. Motion by Mr. Hickerson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Casey Hines. Any discussion on the enrollment numbers? All right, hearing none, roll call vote again, please. Mr. Smith. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Before I, Casey. Aye. Reno. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Mr. Peterson. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Unanimously, thank you. All right, we're going to number 16, the non-action items. Academic programming and negotiation special meeting necessary. Now. On this part, the negotiation um, special meeting necessary. But anyway, I requested that because we did receive the OEA uh, request to negotiate contract. I want to have a meeting that our board members can receive information that we are better prepared for negotiation time uh, when we get to that process. And by that, I mean I'm asking for certain numbers from certain departments and reviewing negotiation uh, procedures from MSPA, uh, which uh, some of us attended those seminars in the past, 
and I just want to be better prepared, and that's why I thought if we could sit at the table, just discuss those issues, so when it comes to negotiation time, we don't take a year and a half to settle this contract like we have. I would like to have them done like they're supposed to be done, if possible, earlier than we have this past couple of years. Uh, so that's what the that's the uh, idea behind this meeting that we can make this move at a uh, better pace. Secondly, in the academic program, and I think uh, Kathy, do you want to share any of that tonight? Uh, so, or do you want to wait for that meeting? Well, um, what I would like to share is that you're supposed to receive um, staffing information. You're to receive programming. <coughs> Um, updates on what your administrative team feels um, is being successful or possibly needs to be changed. And so um, we, we would like the three of us to have that opportunity to talk with you about the program structure here at Overly Schools. And so um, that, again, uh, both of these would fall under um, a closed meeting yes. um, so that we can talk and, and get things um, decided um, and not um, violate um, violate the privacy of, of um, people and programming. And so both of these issues, they, um, not issues, both of these topics are right. very um, important to the district at this time. And so thinking that if we designate one night and um, we could get a whole lot accomplished with the focus on those two areas. Like an hour for each? I, that's what I would propose, yes. Okay, and I, I agree with that. And the thing is, now, in that, that special meeting, come prepared. Uh, if you don't have copies of uh, the master agreement, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would appreciate if everybody reviewed those so that we can have a feel for it. Uh, there's, and I can bring any information or anybody on this board can about the negotiations that, uh, that these people are presenting to us that we can relate to you while we hear it might be happening. Maybe. Would you like me to make sure that there's a paper copy of um, the master agreement for OEA um, provided to all of the board members that night, or do you want both OEA and OESPA? Well, I was going to get to the OESPA, and that's okay. coming too, so why not? Okay. Uh, I have them. I don't know if any board members don't have them. Uh, yeah, they should have them, because it's very good to read through them, uh, because there's always language or possibly language changes that we can be familiar with that we can be better prepared to handle. Then really, it should be sent electronically, so people would be able to see them before coming to the meeting. Right, and that's what I, I suggested. Anyway. All right, so um, I, I'll do both. I'll send it electronically. I mean, it's on our school website. Yes. Um, anybody can does have access to that. And um, on the website, you go to documents. Mm -hmm. Then you go to what? Documents, and then you go to um, OEA master agreement. Okay, I, I can never find them. Okay. I can get that stream for you, or it might be just easier if I electronically send it to you. What do you guys think? Electronic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So anyway, it's right there. Yes. Oh, sorry for the delay. No, no, I'll wait till after you're done. No, I was just going to say the next thing is to pick a day and pick a time that, that suits everybody the best we can. Realizing not everybody could be there possibly, but if we can get, even if they attend virtually, that would be great, too. Is that correct, Kathy? That would, that would be correct. And the yes. sooner the better, is what we're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Reno. All right. I was just curious which board members have attended the negotiation training this year. I know I myself won. I was just hoping to kind of get a good idea of who's gone there, who hasn't. The other thing is if... Uh, depending on how the teams break out that negotiations manual that we got from MSBA might be worthwhile to for everybody to have a copy and I would be willing to photocopy mine to get those out to the board members who did not attend that training. I bet the MSBA would be willing to send them to us too. But yeah, I went to the meeting and I think Josh, there's some of us that have. And I did also. Yeah. So, Casey? I didn't go. I didn't. And I too would be glad to share any information I have, uh, whatever. And, and Mr. Chair, um, Lori Ferguson and I have already had a meeting, and so we oh. talked about the requests of documents to be brought to okay, that. Thank you. So that's been done. All right. 
Thanks, Reno. If anybody wants to let Reno know, huh? Okay. So just a matter of setting up a meeting time. Uh, and again, some people are available more than others, so it seems to be healing to be the best way. Or I know some people at work. Mm -hmm. You know, so whatever fits your schedule as well, Kathy, and our principal. Another meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and the public meeting will be open as many as you're able. Okay. So, right. so, so we, we, were, we were hoping for a meeting either yet this week or possibly next Monday night. Um, I know that most board members reserve their Mondays yep. for board meetings, and so we have an extra Monday in March, so the 29th, um, or again, um, a night this week. We do the 29th? 29th. All right, 29th. Reno? Uh, on a Monday. Yeah, that's Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that work? And we'll kind of tennis really plan that then? Yep. We would start at six o'clock. Is that um mm -hmm. consistent? Okay, thank you. All right. We all got anybody any other uh, discussion on that? And we'll just take it in the same order though, so we'll do the programming first. Yes. So that our principals would be able to sure. get out an earlier. Sure, that's fine. All right, here and now we'll move on to number 17, the pop-up pantry we've discussed briefly, the 24th, 2021. Uh well, we've already said what it is. It's a free deal for the second harvest that anybody who wants food can get it. And there'll be plenty of help there. I'm going to be there just because I want to be part of the food shelf people. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's kind of interesting, I guess, like just a new committee member there. Uh, so it should be a good thing. Everybody's invited. Pass the word, like you said earlier, Kathy. Mm -hmm. And it is free food. I think they just come by. What they do, they, however many people are in that truck, they throw food in there for you, and off you go. Pretty simple. I don't know what the food is, mm -hmm. but it's food. Okay, anybody have anything they want to add a question about that? Okay, oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, and I do have the insurance documents okay. um, in my office. And so um, we're we're all set to go and awesome people that um, that are setting that up. Right, we're concerned about insurance things with Kathy family. All right, good. 18, COVID-19 update, indoor activities. As of today, um, we do have one positive staff member um, received that notification on uh, Saturday night. And um, I, uh, Canada County and I had a conversation today, so we're all set to go um, with that. Um, we know that as COVID, um, as, as those numbers went down, we were um, being allowed to open things up in the building. Um, we are also again too with the COVID 19, we're opening up the riding on our school buses, and that's why I wanted Alicia to share that. You know, it's going to be after school because we are we want to see what happens when we put more kids onto that second bus route because the intent is eventually we can get back to normal and having full capacity um, on our buses. So, um, we're, in, we're interested to see how that works. Our county numbers have increased, not significantly, but they have um, they have increased from like the mid teens to the high teens, and so um, the the most recent um, information from 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 the state was um, was again they're just below twenty in all three of our our counties, and however, the um, there is. The speculation that those numbers will continue to climb a bit higher. Um, so the next report on um, the next two weeks will also be um, higher. Um, as far as our advisory council, um, we have gone to basically the the um, crisis management safety team meetings have now taken their kind of their rightful place um, with the advisory council having kind of a back seat. So the, um, the the last meeting was where. Um, every two weeks, I will send out uh, an informational email. So the two weeks is tomorrow. 
So I'll be sending that, that um, information out to all of the council members um, so they can see act, I mean, actual numbers. So again, um, in talking with um, the Canada County Community Health today, um, people are concerned um, at, the, at the health department about Easter coming and family gatherings and you know what, what could, could happen. Um, we, it's just a wait and see. We can always and continue to stress with our, our kids and our staff that the mask is the best defense against COVID. And so the masks aren't going to go away, um, even if people have been um, fully vaccinated. And that's really good news though too. And we're hoping that as more and more um, people become fully vaccinated, that um, hopefully we can um, see some, some more st stability. Um, actually, we have the stability in our school because if somebody is completely vaccinated, even if they do have some, some positive um, COVID in their homes, they can still come to work. And so that, that part will be very beneficial um, to us. As far as opening things up, um, the indoor activities, um, we did receive you know, the permission to open up indoor activities to 250 people or um, the 50% the capacity. So that's why um, at our games, our basketball games that were held here, we raised those numbers and we went with 150 of our home um, parents, spectators, and then we went with 100 for the guests coming in. And we paralleled that with football when we had the outdoor restrictions um, earlier in the year. And that was the 150 um, home and the 100 for, for guests. Um, as you heard from, from um, our student um, school board members um, tonight, we want to have activities for our kids um, that, that are, um, yes, they, you know, I always tell the kids, I will worry. I will worry every time we open up the door um, for you know going that next step. But we we can't. Um, I don't think it's healthy at all for us to just completely close everything up. So we've got to try to make um, life normal for the kids and for all of us here at school. As far as um, in our lunchroom and in the the other areas, we're down now to that three foot capacity. And so, um, or the three foot um, distance, social distancing, excuse me. And so that seems to be working okay. Um, we have not had, since March 2nd, we have had zero students that have been positive for COVID. And so we're hoping that that will continue throughout the rest of the month of March. But as we all know, um, it could change at any given time, and that's when we did it. And as long as we keep that open mind, of you know allowing life to get back to normal but if it's not going to be safe then we pull back and um, go to a little bit more restrictions so we're hoping that that meets with everybody's um approval as we move on um and again you know the winter formal is one step towards some normalcy for our kids um and again as i mentioned earlier we're um, excited to start planning prom and um, graduation. Um, at my uh, area superintendent's meeting last Friday, um, there was talk, um, we kind of went around table to find out what districts were doing as far as graduation in particular. And most of them were going to go back to their traditional graduation um, indoors. And then there were a few that said um, that um, the initial talks have been pull some of the fun things, the great things that happened with our COVID graduation last spring and our last spring summer and do a mix. And so I know that um, that uh, Mrs. Davis and I received a lot of comments, um, good comments about our parking lot graduation. And there are some pieces that people really like that we will be um, discussing more in, in length. Um, and we'll of course be bringing back to you um, what we decide or what we would like to propose as the graduation ceremony for this year. The great news is graduate, graduation ceremonies are going to take place. Good. Okay. Anything else on the call? Anybody else like to add? Any questions that you might yeah. have? So as far as the graduation, that will be graduation. Mm -hmm. 
No, there's guidance from the yeah. state, from MDE and, and MDH also, yes. And as far as prom, different venues have been um, sharing what they can offer to the school districts to make sure and guarantee the safety protocols are being put into place. And so we've been able to experience a little bit of that. And so um, I know that there's a whole lot of excitement about prom happening this year too. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. okay. Any else? Anybody? I'll entertain item number 19. The motion to adjourn at 721. Posted by Mr. Hickerson is adjourned. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Casey Hines. Roll call vote, Josh. Aye. Mr. Hickerson. Aye. I vote aye. Casey Hines. Aye. Reno. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Aye. All right, thank you all for coming. I appreciate all your input. See you Monday. Okay, before you all leave, we deserve the coaches and um, ADs in our conference.